Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Now, I want you to actually get your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 4 because at the end, we're going to show you something that I think is really, really cool. And, and so turn there with me, if you will. Now, remember, Ruth had gone and she had gleaned in Boaz's field and then she had gone to the threshing floor and she had... Uh, done what she was told. She uncovered his feet and lie down next to him. And, and he realized, oh, you know, there's somebody next to me. And, and he said, oh, you know, you are, you are uh, Ruth and uh, you're actually my kinswoman. And he realized his obligation to her. And he said, you know what, I'm going to do the right thing and I am going to redeem you. In other words, I am going to uh, I, I'm going to marry you and uh, fulfill my obligation to you and to your uh, husband and father-in-law and, and so on and so forth. In any case, and so he sent her home with all that barley and, and Naomi saw that and, and said, wow, this is wonderful because I know exactly what's going to happen. He's not going to rest until he's taken care of this. And so the next day, Boaz went down to the gate of Bethlehem. Okay, now you have to understand, the gates of a city were where all of the business was conducted. And many times there were places right by the gate and sometimes even within the wall and by the gate where the, uh, the, the elders would sit and business was conducted. And it was also where people were coming in and out all the time. And so you could meet someone there because, you know, they didn't have cell phones. They didn't have telephones. They couldn't call someone, couldn't set up an appointment. They had to actually find them and meet them. And there was another individual who was closer to Naomi and thus to Ruth in relationship than Boaz. And so that's the one he needed to talk to. And so sure enough, he, he sat there in the gate and not long afterwards, this other guy comes walking through, I don't know what his name is, let's call him Bob. And, uh, and he says, hey, Bob, step over here. And, and Bob says, ah, Boaz, good to see you. And they, you know, I'm sure they greeted. And, and, uh, and he says, you know what, Ruth, uh, Naomi has returned, and uh, her daughter-in-law, Naomi, is, is with them. But, you know, they have a piece of property that belonged to Elimelech. And Elimelech, when he went away, sold it. But it is the right of our family to redeem that. In other words, we can buy that back and, uh, and, and have it and keep it within the family. And uh, Bob said, oh, okay, I will, I will redeem that. I will take care of that. And then Boaz says, oh, that's good. But at the same time that you redeem that, you're also going to have to marry uh, Ruth because that goes along with part and parcel of redeeming it. And the guy says, I have to marry her? Well, I'm already married and that would really ruin my, uh, that would mar my heritage, he said. Uh, it, it would mar my heritage. And, in other words, it would mess up my family. And, uh, and so uh, he said, uh, no, why don't, you, why don't you redeem him? And he said, okay, I will redeem the land and, uh, and I will marry Ruth. And then they did a little ceremony thing where they would take off their sandals and they would you know, show them. And, and all of the people who were there at the gate, they were the elders and the rulers and the people of Bethlehem, all of them bear witness to that. And there was probably some a scribe that was writing things down that happened in the gate so that they could be legal and binding. And, uh, and so he, uh, he, he said, you know, he held up his sandal and, and so did Bob. And they said, okay, we're making this agreement and I am hereby redeeming the property and I am marrying, uh, marrying Ruth. And, uh, and everyone was rejoicing because everyone knew that Ruth was a woman of good character because she was taking care of Naomi, even though she wasn't Israelite by, you know, by birth. Uh, she certainly was by character. And uh, he, he, they all said, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we praise the Lord. I want you to see what they said. Um, uh, take a look in uh, 
chapter 11, excuse me, in chapter 4, verse 11. And all the people that were there in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come unto thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which did build the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. You see what they were saying? I am sure that they thought that this was just some thing that was a blessing, but I want you to see that God actually made this happen. Uh, <clears throat> and verse 12, And let thy house be like the house of Pharez, whom Tamar, Tamar bare unto Judah of the seed uh, which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. Um, and they had a son, and they brought that son to Naomi, and Naomi realized, ah, I came back, I did what God wanted, and God has blessed me, and my daughter-in-law now is married to a wonderful man, and now I am holding a, 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 a little son, and, and this is the, the, the seed of my family, and, and she was so happy. But I want you to take a look at the end of the chapter, because we see something really interesting here. Boaz and Ruth had a big family, and the Lord blessed them, and they went on. And, uh, and notice in verse 18. Now, these are the generations of Perez, okay? Because who was Perez? Perez was the son of Ruth and Boaz. Um, uh, no, I'm sorry, actually backing up a little ways. But notice in verse 18. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Perez begat uh, Hezron, and Hezron begat Ram, and Ram begat Abinadab, and Abinadab begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz. Now here we have the the uh, the husband of uh, of Ruth. Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse. Is this starting to sound familiar? And Jesse begat David. Yeah, King David. Okay, and so in other words, David was the great, great, great grandson of Naomi and Boaz. What an amazing heritage. And God fulfilled what they had said. When they blessed them there in the gate, God fulfilled that. What, what an amazing thing. And one more thing I want to point out to you. You know, not only did David come from Boaz and Ruth, but also Jesus Christ came from that. Because remember, Jesus Christ was referred to as the son of David. So what, a, what an amazing heritage. And when we determine that we're going to do the right thing because it's the right thing, that's what good character is all about. And God looks at that and he says, Amen. And I'm going to fulfill those blessings that people bless you with. And you know what? I'm going to bless you. And that's what God does. And so here we find that it is an amazing thing that God does. There was one guy who said, you know what? I don't want to mar my heritage. And there was another guy who said, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing. And we find that because Ruth had character and Boaz had character, God blessed. And uh, great things came of it. Now, what are you going to do with that? Hey, Love you guys. See you later. Bye-bye.